Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland um, and in this series of videos, I suppose this is the first video in this particular series dealing with propositional logic but more importantly uh, dealing with an aspect within propositional logic which is what's known as natural deduction and a natural deduction system. Okay? Uh, we're looking at in this particular video the four, one of the first rules or the first rules uh, rule within this natural deduction system uh, which is known as and introduction. Okay? Uh, and I suppose we have a number of ways of writing down these rules. Uh, uh, they, 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 they have a form, okay? So they have a form something like, like this, okay? They have, let's say, uh, premises, okay? So they have premises, okay? Uh, above and they have, let's say, uh, the things that we're going to conclude, yeah, okay? Conclude from them premises written below. And then we have the symbol, uh, that's used to represent this particular, let's say, this particular uh, function, okay? or this particular, this particular, this particular rule. Uh, this video, as I said, is looking at uh, and introduction. Okay, so we're going to look at actually a number of things. We're going to look at uh, and introduction. Okay. And we're going to look at and elimination. Okay, but let's have a look at the rule for and introduction. And what the rule for and introduction says is this: is that in our in our proof, okay, when we're conducting a, a particular proof, okay, where we have a set of premises initially, and from them premises we're going to deduce uh, other rules, okay, uh, until eventually we get to uh, a conclusion, okay. Uh, but what and introduction says is that if we have a formula, okay, and if we have a, a set of a set of deductions, and that if we have shown that. If we have shown, or we've deduced five from from some set of previous previously defined things, uh, and if we've if we've let's say uh, deduced psi from those particular things, uh, that what we can actually do is that from those two deductions, uh, that we can conclude that phi and with psi uh, must actually be true. Okay. Uh, this is known as the introduction, so this is an and introduction symbolized by the hat followed by an I. Okay, so this is and introduction. So if you have a proof, okay, and if you want to introduce introduce an and or this particular connective, okay, well to introduce the and you have to have a, the left operand and the right operand. And what this rule is saying to us is that to be able to introduce the phi and the psi, the phi and the psi must have been deduced uh, or assumed uh, previous uh, at some earlier stage within 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 the proof. And we'll have a look at an application of this now in a few moments, okay? But that's that's the and introduction. Let me just get a blue marker here and just let's just put this in, in, a, in a box. That's the and introduction rule. Okay. Now we can go around. We can go back the other way. Okay. Uh, and we can actually have and elimination. Okay. So we have and uh, elimination. Okay. And what and elimination tells us, let's say from a from a formula perspective. Okay. That if we've already proven somewhere uh, within within our proof okay and it might have actually been the start it might be an assumption that we're assuming to be true but if that we've actually proved somewhere within our proof our deduction uh, that phi ended with psi uh, is true or we've deduced it okay well then what we can actually take from that is if phi ended with psi is true, well then what we can actually take from that is that phi, we can conclude that phi must be true. Uh, so we can actually take the left operand true uh, to to conclude the left operand uh, from this particular from this particular ending. Yeah, uh, this is known as and elimination, and it's elimination one uh, because there's actually two elimination rules. Okay, the first elimination rule is allowing us to take the left operand true. Okay, if 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 phi ended with psi is true. Okay, or has been deduced within our proof. Okay, well then, for us to be able to add these two things together, okay, we must have had phi and psi being true somewhere previous in the proof, if that makes sense, or we're assuming it to be true. In which case, we can take either of these true, and in the end, uh, elimination rule uh, one takes the left operand true. Okay, so that's the end elimination rule one. Okay. And then what we have is we have and elimination rule two. Uh, so we have our function. So we have phi and with psi. 
and what we're saying is that if we've if we've proven this okay or deduced phi ended with psi within our proof uh, well then what we can conclude is that psi must be true if we take the right operand and this is called and elimination two this is the second version of it okay so basically we have two elimination rules okay that allows us to eliminate the eliminate the, the connective the and connective okay the first one allows us to carry forward the left operand and the second one allows us to carry forward the right operand okay so how can we how can we actually apply these if that makes sense and uh, some of the examples that I'm, I'm going to be using are taken from two important textbooks okay uh, let me maybe just show you this I'll grab the first one off the shelf yeah okay uh, it's the science of programming by David Greaves, okay, which is I'd highly recommend uh, to get. That's really, 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 really interesting read. Uh, and then the other one that I have here uh, is by Huth and Ryan, which is logic in computer science, modeling and reasoning about systems, okay. Uh, so I'd recommend either of those particular books. Uh, and actually, some of the examples that I'm actually going to consider uh, have been taken from have been taken from from those. Uh, from those texts okay so let's say we have I want to prove something okay so I actually want to do a proof now so let's say I want to prove the validity of the following sequence okay so let's say we want to prove prove the validity the validity okay of the following of the following sequence okay sequence okay okay and the sequence is let's say we have we have a set of premises okay so we have uh, p ended with q ended with or okay that's a premise okay and uh, we also have s ended with t uh, and what we want to be able to prove from them is the con let's say the we want to be able to prove from them two premises we'd like to be able to get to the stage where we conclude that q ended with s uh, is true okay so based off these premises we'd like to be able to get to this particular conclusion okay and what we're going to do is we're going to do this in a number of steps okay for each line uh, of this particular proof we're going to number the line uh, and what we're going to do first of all is the typical uh, way we do these proofs is we write down the things that we know to be true initially okay so our premises are true so the first line of this proof is going to be that p ended with q them to associate it and with or we know that that's true because in the sequence it is listed as a premise okay so that's that is true okay based because it's a premise okay where okay. uh, the second premise that we have is s ended with t so let's say the second stage of this proof uh, is that s ended with t is true because that's also listed as a premise now what we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to break these things up, okay, and bring them back together so that we end up with Q and with S. So our, we're, what we'd like to conclude through a deductive process, yeah, okay, based, and just using and introduction uh, and elimination, uh, we'd like to use just them rules, uh, is we'd like to be able to conclude that Q and with S is true, okay. So to get the Q ended with S, we can see that we need to actually have. You can see that's going. Where at some stage we're going to have to introduce introduce uh, Q ended with S. Okay, in which case we're going to have to show somewhere earlier in the proof that Q is true, and we're also going to have to show that S is true. But Q and S are tied up in these particular premises. Okay, so we need to we need to release them. Okay, so what we can actually see is that in relation to Q, Q is tied up in the first premise. Okay, so what we can actually do, and where is it tied up? Well, it's tied up as the part of the left operand of this particular and here. Okay, so we can release the left operand of this and using and elimination, and actually using the elimin the first elimination rule. So the first elimination rule says that if you have a left operand on an and and a right operand on an and, and you know that these are true, okay, well then you can release the left operand to give us uh, the left operand is true so in this particular case I can actually deduce that P ended with Q must be true so step 3 is that P ended with Q must be true and the way I got that is I applied and elimination rule 1 I applied that to my for statement okay to to the for statement in this particular in this particular proof okay now we need Q 
Okay. So what you can actually see, I think, here is that now we can use and elimination rule too. That allows us to release the second or the, the right hand uh, operand that's associated with the and. Okay. So step four is that we can actually deduce if p and with q is true, we can actually deduce that q is true. And the way we're actually deducing that is from the and elimination rule too, and that's being applied to the third line of this particular this particular proof. Okay. So you see now we've released q. Now we can actually release s from this particular uh, from the second line of this particular proof we can release s so step five we can release s so s can get released because it's an and elimination as well we're eliminating the and and we're carrying true as the as the we're concluding uh from if s and t if s and t is true s if s and t is true well then we can conclude that s is true okay the the left operand so that's from and elimination one on line two uh, being applied to line two of the proof so now we have q and s is true so we have we've now from deduced we've deduced from these particular premises that q and s must be true so now the introduction rule says to us that if we have deduced somewhere in our proof that phi and psi is true well then we can conclude that phi and with psi must be true also okay and this is and introduction so step six of the proof is that we can take q we can and it with s and what this is is this is and introduction uh, of line four of the proof with line five of the proof and actually that's the proof done okay so what we've actually done now is this is that we have a proof uh, we have a proof of the sequent uh, which you can see from a deductive logic perspective allows us to take the premises to break them up using the elimination rule, the and elimination rule, uh, so that we arrive at the conclusion. Okay? Let's have a look at one more example, okay? Uh, another interesting example. Uh, so let's have a look at, let's say we want to prove something like, okay, let's just leave this here. Oh, I need the and, I need our rules here, okay? Let's keep our rules here. So let's we want to prove the validity of the following sequence. So let's say prove the validity validity okay, of the following of the following sequent okay sequent and the sequent that we'd like to prove is that p and with q them associated with each other and with or okay that from this we can conclude that p and with q and with or okay this is the this is oh it's association okay so we have the association rule so let's start her off line one of our proof is where we where we're going to list our premises that we're assuming to be true so we're assuming this to be true uh, p and with q and with or that's a premise okay and what we need to we need to do is we need to start releasing uh, the p the q and the r and then bringing them back together in a certain order okay so what we can actually do is we can release the left upper end of this particular end here okay so we can release that uh, so because we know that uh, phi phi in this case is the compound statement p ended with q okay uh, we know that to be true well that's sorry not that we know that to be true uh, phi ended with q sorry p ended with q is phi and or is psi in this particular in this particular situation and what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the and okay if this whole thing is true uh, the left upper and ended with the right upper and well then the left upper and must be true okay based off and elimination rule one so what we end up with is we end up with p ended with q uh, must be true and this is from and elimination one uh, being applied to the first line of our proof okay and then what we can do from this is we can release we can release the p the p must be true and that's and elimination one being applied to to second line of the proof and then we can release q step four we can release q okay uh, because that's and elimination rule two okay okay from from being applied to the second line of this particular proof here we can release the psi okay the psi if if phi and psi is true well then psi must be true we can conclude that psi must be true okay so and then finally i suppose uh, we can release the right operand here which is the or okay using uh, also the second the second elimination rule so we can get or uh, from and elimination rule two being applied to 
being applied to one okay now we need to bring things back together in the appropriate order okay so we have to bring things back together in the appropriate order so we need to i suppose we need to get q and r and it together so we actually have to introduce an and okay so the left operand will be first followed by the right operand okay so the left operand is four and the right operand is going to be five so we have step six of this proof is we can we can conclude that q and with or must be true okay because from uh, and introduction uh, on lines four and lines five okay from lines four and five and then finally we do another and introduction but this time the p is ended with line three is ended with line six okay or we introduce we've already shown in our deduction that p is true the phi and we've also shown that six is true the q ended with or the psi so we have these two things already proven in our proof so we can conclude that phi ended with psi must be true in other words line seven of the proof is that p and with q and with or must be true and this is and introduction uh, using lines three and line six of our proof effectively what we have here is that this is phi okay and this whole thing over here okay uh, is psi okay and they are here that's phi and this is oh where am I going to and this is this is this is psi so the introduction is bringing them two things together um, which is another example uh, of our proof uh, okay guys uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland uh, and in these, this particular uh, video what we concentrated on was we concentrated on our first set of rules in relation to our natural deduction system uh, and in particular the and the set of and rules for the introduction of ands and the elimination of ands uh, within 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 uh, deductive proofs uh, that we might that we might be under that we might undertake okay guys once again uh, i hope that this video was uh, intuitive and more importantly i hope that was helpful to you and thanks for watching okay bye bye